Hello, it's Alden. I've got a tutorial for quickly creating graphs in After Effects. I'm an independent filmmaker who spent the last six years working as an editor and motion designer at various news and media companies. And one of the most common types of animations required is creating graphs. Most often a producer will screenshot a graph and ask me to recreate it. So I'm gonna walk through that workflow today. So let's get started. Make a new composition, Control N or Command N. Let's call this bar graph. 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 2997 and 20 seconds. Because I'm working in online news media, we use 2997 instead of 2398. This is because most of the video clips and assets we're pulling are already in 2997, so that's what our project files usually are. Occasionally we work in 2398, but that's the exception more than the norm. So there's a heads up if you're like me and you come from the film world and end up working in media. I'm gonna make a new solid background. Control Y or Command Y, hit OK, and there we go. So here is a screenshot of some random data I put in a spreadsheet and made a graph. So let's pretend this is something that a producer has sent to you. The first thing we're gonna do is bring it into our timeline, of course, and then we're gonna resize it to fit the screen. Sometimes you'll get square graphs or something, and you can honestly stretch it any way you want. We're gonna be tracing the shapes and the correlation between all of this data is the same no matter what dimensions we give it. So I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit, make it a little bit more horizontal. Next, we're gonna trace one of the bars. So let's go to this first one. We're gonna use the shape tool. So you can click up here or hit Q and let's just trace this square right here. Next, we're gonna move the anchor point down to the bottom. I use this add-on move anchor points. I'll link to this add-on in the description below. It's incredibly useful and I use it pretty much every time I'm in After Effects. Next, hit S for the scale and we're gonna unlink the two properties here. Let's hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe, slide that back to like a second or so, and then find which axis we want, not that one. It's gonna be here, so make that zero. Okay, so there we have a really simple animation of the bar animating up. Highlight our keyframes, hit F9 to turn on Easy Ease, and then click over here to the graph editor. We're gonna zoom in, and let's just adjust the handles a little bit to make that animation a little more smooth. Cool, that's good, working for now. So now we're gonna duplicate this one bar graph for and place it above all the other ones. And the reason I do it this way is so that I can just do that animation one time and then the animation's gonna be the same for each of these other bars and then afterwards I'm gonna adjust the, the height of each one. But first, uh, let's just duplicate and lay it out as closely as we can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Next, we're gonna to go to the Align tab and let's just select all of our bar graphs and click this one here, Distribute Horizontally, and that's going to make them all evenly spaced. If you don't have this Align tab here, you can find it in Window, Align, and it'll pop up. Great, so now we are here at the same frame as this keyframe, so I can go and take this one, just use the handles here, uh, because the anchor points down at the bottom, I can just pull it here from the center and it'll adjust the Y scale and just make it align. And because I'm here, if you hit U, you can pull up keyframes. If I, because I'm here at this keyframe, um, that's gonna adjust the animation. So now this one is gonna go just to that height. So we're gonna do that for all of these bars. And there we go. We have the beginning of our graph. Don't forget to save. We're actually gonna stagger all these animations eventually, but for now, let's just leave everything as is and build the rest of the graph. To do this, I'm gonna turn down the opacity of the background a little bit. So hit T for opacity and just, I don't know, something that I can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit more. I'm just using this for reference. If you wanna be extra careful uh, in your renders or in your dynamically linked compositions, you can set this to a guide layer by right-clicking and choosing guide layer. That just means it shows up here in your comp, but it will be invisible in any kind of render or pre-comp or anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna select my pen tool. I'm gonna turn fill off and let's set the stroke to something like five, 
change it to white. And I'm just going to draw the X and Y axes of this graph. So click, hit shift to make a straight line and shift again. And there we have our axis. So I'm actually going to rename this axis. The background lines here on the graph, they're definitely optional and there are a million ways to do them. You can do the grid effect on a solid. By the way, I have my effects controls panel right here to the right. Normally it's in a tab over here by project. The reason I do that is because I got tired of dragging my effects all the way across the comp and then animating everything over here. This way I can just go back and forth pretty quickly. Um, so you could do something this way, adjust as need be. You can use the Venetian blinds to kind of play with all of these settings to do something like that. I found that the quickest way is again to use the shape tool. So I'm going to use my pen again, make sure I'm not highlighting any other shape layer, otherwise you'll be adding it to that shape layer. And I'm just going to draw a horizontal line and then I'm going to go into contents shape path and just duplicate it. Click on that path and just arrow key down, duplicate it again. And there we go. All those BG lines or something like that. So this background is going to go beneath our graph layers. And that's sort of, um, I'm going to change that opacity down just to make it a little, little lighter. So a way to animate this um, axis, if you toggle down, click this arrow add and go to trim paths, that'll trim the shape, uh, shape layers paths. Toggle on the keyframe for the end, move that forward and set this to zero. And then you have, I mean, that's crazy fast because I'm zoomed in, um, but you have something like that. So we can highlight the keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease them. Um, and then we will retime everything in a minute. But for now, let's call this good. I think for this background lines, I'm just going to animate the opacity. change this to three just to make all of those a little thinner. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, now let's add some text. We need a title to our graph. So let's call this something like Lorem Ipsum data graph or something. Spell check. Perfect. For the rows on the bottom, I'm going to do the same technique as the shape layers that make up the bar graphs. I'm going to make one and then duplicate it and kind of space it out evenly. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. Let's bring it down. To Jan 20 to 101. We're obviously going to want to make it a lot smaller. Set it here. Change the weight a little bit. Um, and I'm probably for both of these text ones, I'm going to hit Alt Shift T, which will make a keyframe for the value that you're hitting T for opacity. If you're on a Mac, that should be option T, I think. Over here, set the opacity to zero. So that's going to animate on. So now we're just going to duplicate this Control D or Command D and then space them out under each one. And then same thing, we're going to highlight them all. I'm going to go to the Align tab and make sure they're evenly spaced. And then I'm going to change, go in and change all the dates. If you wanted to, you could make, change the dates first and then align everything, you know, whatever your preference is. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, thankfully that is pretty much the most tedious part of the whole process and we're done. So congratulations. For the Y axis here, I'm just gonna, let's take the one up at the top and duplicate it just to keep the font weights the same. Let's kind of set it where this goes. What is that? 100,000? A 100,000, I don't know. 
let's make this dollars or something just to make the data make some sense. And then just hit enter and we're gonna enter the, enter the values, so. And then over here in the character tab, in this line spacing, I'm just gonna increase that so they all align. I'm also gonna change it to write justified. So we might have to then kind of move it over a little bit. character, it's a little low. The nice thing about doing this trick is, let's say you get a screenshot of data that just has 100, 50, and zero, and maybe you want more detail in there. So you can create those extra lines, and because everything is evenly spaced, as long as the graph isn't logarithmic, as long as it's linear, you can add more or less data points in here to for the graph depending on what the data is how important all of those values are if it's just sort of like the correlation between these bar graphs um, this one is obviously very random i just threw a bunch of values together so i would assume like if you were doing something like this it's kind of like there's no real trend to follow so it'd probably be the data would be something about you know what the actual values is a lot of these are kind of low i might want some more lines here just to to break it up because all of these fall within this whole square and all of these fall within this square other than these two outliers um, this doesn't really tell me much about what that value is so if i wanted to um, do that i would just have to break it up between each one so let's say we wanted to do so this is going to be 87 500 this is all falling off screen so you know if we go back here and set the line spacing distance so that our 75 and 50 still align, you're gonna see we have these nice midpoints. Um, we just need to add some more math than I was expecting to do today. Um, so if we did that, we might also wanna go into our background lines and add some lines for them. So we can go into content, shape, take a path, duplicate it. When I'm making these, I am eyeballing them actually, just um, the kind of a line feature, as far as I know, doesn't work sort of like within the um, shape parameter. I'm sure there is a simple way to do this. I mean, I could do it if I wanted to make each one of these a separate layer. I could make sure it was super perfect. Um, but for our purposes here, this is good enough. So there we go. We just added all of these extra little data points pretty quickly. Now that we have everything laid out, I'm gonna make a null object. I like to make my control null objects orange and just parent everything to the null object, including the screenshot here. Um, that way, if I just need to move anything around, I can do that with the null. Like right now, everything's a little high. So there we go, we can bring it down and that looks much nicer. Now that we have everything designed our way, we can adjust that there. And then we can kind of take this and move it up a little bit because it seems a little close. So now we're gonna animate everything. So um, we're gonna follow the documents tutorial for staggering animations. So I'm gonna take all of these bar graphs, go to the end of the comp, select starting with the first one, shift, select the last one, go to animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, overlap, and we're gonna do essentially 19, let's say 28, and see how that goes. There we go. I think that looks great. Now let's do the same thing with the dates on the bottom. Shift select them in the order you want them to go, beginning to end. Animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. Our settings should be the same. So we can do that and maybe offset them just a little so we don't need to actually see it pop up like until here. That looks nice. I think the um, axis is a little fast, so hit U to pull up the keyframes there. And also 
graph editor, maybe smooth out the end. We can kind of have it, you know, sort of arriving over here as the last one goes, and that's going to help sort of draw your eye. Um, this can pop, like, you know, fade on right at the beginning if you wanted to wait until, you know, that stuff appears, and then we see this stuff. That could work too. There we go. That's our graph. Hit save. In addition to bar graphs, you will also come in across line graphs. And so when you have a graph here, let me take, I think this is a line graph of the same data. So let me just uh, resize it to match what we got going on. Okay, so let's um, say it's this. So here is like a line graph version of this chart. What we're gonna do is very similar to the axis. We're just gonna use the pen tool and trace it. So set the fill to zero, set the stroke, let's call it five, let's change the color. And just trace your graph. Make sure you're not selecting your graph, otherwise it's just gonna draw a mask over it. Um, we wanna do this with the shape layer. And this one is pretty simple. There aren't that many data points to hit. You just wanna make sure you're getting each change. That one's a little off. Okay, so let's take these two, parent it to the null. Let's turn this guy off. And, you know, if we want to animate this, let's go to here. I'll turn these off. So let's go back up here to this line graph, go to the trim paths. Animate the end, go here, hit zero. We're gonna highlight our keyframes, hit F9 for easy ease, then go into the graph editor. And then we're going to, you know, smooth that out at the end a little bit. It's going a little fast. There, something like that. And then once we have this, you know, we can Maybe make it a little thicker if we wanted to. Animating graphs is super common. Making them from scratch can be a pain, but by automating a lot of the processes and by doing things in batch groups, we can make something that looks pretty good very fast. And then from here, now that we have, you know, the data information on there, we have the animation, we can go in and fine-tune our design. Animating graphs is super common with news video, and even though making them from scratch each time is time-consuming, hopefully the techniques in this tutorial will help the process go faster. If there's anything else you want an After Effects tutorial about, let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. And happy editing, everyone. Did you guys know about Spellcheck?